Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm back in my Terra Firmacraft world to do the part two of my Terra Firmacraft Spotlight. Uh, a few things I want to get to today. Um, there's a handful of items I want to show you, a handful of processes to go through, and uh, just kind of wrap up some of the uh, things I didn't get to last episode. So let's get started on Terra Firmacraft part two. Alright guys, so one of the first items I'd like to show you here is this guy. This is a forge, and as you can see, I just built it up uh, like so. 3x3 uh, three three on the base, and just uh, one level on top. Um, and you can you make it out of pretty much anything. I made it out of uh, some nice cobblestone here, but you can really make it out of whatever you want. And uh, once you've built the base, you have to heat it up. And in order to heat it up, you just need yourself some charcoal. Um, throw nine pieces in there like so, and then a fire starter to get it going. All right, we've got ourselves a forge. And what this guy can do is it can either accept coal or charcoal. Coal burns a little bit hotter than charcoal in this guy, and that'll get your heat level going. And what this is is about a five piece um, fire pit, basically. Um, it burns a little bit hotter than a fire pit, so that's good. It'll get things cooking faster. Um, but you're also going to need to place some of your ceramic molds over here on the right hand side to catch any um, liquid metals that get formed. Now the thing about this though is with your cassiterite, uh, you can't actually place the ores in there. Uh, you can only place in here existing metal bars. So if I were to get myself some tin ingots, um, right there and place it in there those things are allowed in but the raw ores are not raw ores still have to be taken care of in the bloomery or in the fire pit um, but what will happen here is your tin ingot you can get it nice and hot and the good thing about this is um, there's some alloys that you want to make which I'm about to get into and uh, this is a good way to get your alloys going by throwing some tin in ingots in here or whatever ingots you want to melt them down either into a, a liquid state or just get them hot enough to be worked on. So uh, it's just a, a device that can have multiple uh, ores or ingots in there at the same time. So I can throw some copper in as well if I want. And you'll note that once it gets hot enough to turn into a liquid stage, it's gonna go ahead and grab the ceramic mold from the right hand side here and fill up the uh, liquid here. And your copper ingots are starting to warm up. Um, now there is a little bit of math involved in getting the right temperature um, because these slots down the bottom are hotter than the slots towards the top here, I believe. Uh, so you'll want to keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that different metals have different melting points. Uh, one of the examples on the wiki is that zinc boils at 907 degrees Celsius, whereas the melting point of copper isn't until 1084 degrees Celsius. So uh, copper has a higher melting point than tin. You'll notice that the copper really hasn't managed to uh, melt quite as fast as the tin did. The tin melted down pretty much by the time, and these guys are still at the hot stage. They're not even at red yet. So copper does take longer to melt than tin, um, and all the different um, metals have different melting points. Good to know. And you might have noticed that I placed one piece of tin in here, as well as two pieces of copper. And along with that, I'm going to place some bismuth, which is another type of uh, metal. And uh, NEI is helping me out with this demonstration. What I want to do is get everything melted down to the point where it's a liquid. So tin's going to stay in there, and it's a nice liquid. And you can see my coppers are getting to the orange stage. And bismuth is uh, quickly progressing. It's already caught up to copper, and it's going to surpass it pretty quickly. So here's another example. Even though bismuth is in the top slot, which is a little bit cooler than this slot, it's obviously melting a lot faster than copper is. Copper is a very slow-to-melt metal. Um, as you can see. So I'll come back once everything has been melted down into a liquid. And once you get your stuff melted down to a liquid, it's still going in there. Let's see, we're at the yellow-white stage of copper. Uh, you're going to need yourself a metallurgy table. As you can see, you want to get some um, granite, gabbro, or diorite, the smooth stone variety, but not the smooth, but the you know non-broken kind, um, and that pattern there to get a metallurgy table. Uh, simply place down your metallurgy table. I'm going to place it right there, and you can see it's this big open crafting area. Um, all the recipes for this are shapeless, and I'm not going to show you all the recipes because you might want to discover them on your own, but many of them are listed on the wiki. 
Um, but what you want to do here on your metallurgy table is combine different amounts of liquid melted metal and you'll get a um, new output. So right now what I've done is started melting down some copper, some bismuth, and some tin. This is one of the recipes that I am going to show you. Uh, one piece of melted tin, two pieces of melted copper. We're at the brilliant white stage, so they should turn to liquid any moment now and uh, one bit of bismuth. And this is the recipe for bismuth bronze. So not all the metals that you can get in terra firma craft are available under the ground. Some of them have to be mixed together as alloys. Cool. Uh, so you can see we got some uh, liquid copper there. We're waiting for this last piece of copper to cook up. Um, the other thing here is you want to make sure to have your coal laying under here. That'll also affect the temperature above it. So I put these two pieces of copper in at about the same time, but because this piece of coal was used up uh, in the fire, this is why the copper ingot over here did not melt as quickly as this one. So let's wait for that, and I'll be right back. Hey, there we go. And uh, do not forget to place your ceramic molds on the right hand side here because if you do melt a metal down and there's no ceramic mold to catch the liquid, the metal is lost forever. Just want to note that for you guys. All right, let's get this stuff out of here nice and quick. Um, you can see because you're melting a bunch of metals at once, it's a good idea to use this machine. And I'm going to throw it all in here. They all have to be at the liquid stage still, and that's when you'll get your unshaped bismuth bronze. Now if it cools down a little bit to the brilliant white and uh, loses the liquid quality, you're going to want to throw it back in the fire. But now we've got bismuth bronze, and that's one of the alloys available. And metal alloys are some of the best and most sought after metals in terraformer craft according to the wiki. Uh, they're the most uh, useful in different uh, you know, instances. They're going to have different strengths and durabilities and the ability to break more stuff and probably do more damage when used as swords. So alloys are much better than um, vanilla um, you know, metals. So now that we've seen how to get some alloys, let's go ahead and use one. Um, I do want to warm up this bismuth bronze. Um, it's going to be uh, made, as far as I know, the same way that you would make other um, ingots. So let's get ourselves a uh, piece of bismuth bronze ingot. You guys have seen me work those on the anvil in the last spotlight. And I'm going to get this guy heated up nice and hot. So we'll throw that into the fire and I'll come back when it's nice and warm. But while waiting I'm going to run over to my crafting table here and throw a piece of paper in and some ink markings like so. Um, didn't want this guy in there. That gives us a pickaxe head. The plan for the pickaxe head can be thrown into the anvil here. You can see I already had one from before. I've been uh, testing this stuff out. Um, so the pickaxe head can go right in the anvil here. And you'll notice that the recipes that you use, um, let's say bismuth bronze with, requires three bismuth bronze ingots to make a bismuth bronze pickaxe. But the recipe for the bismuth bronze pickaxe, that's a little bit hard to say, um, also includes the ability to use a stick with a bismuth bronze pickaxe head. Um, and the pickaxe head only requires one piece of bismuth bronze ingot. Um, so if you want to work your ingot on the anvil here, it's going to save you two pieces of uh, ingot. And this works the same for tin and other things. So uh, while I'm waiting for that guy to heat up, let's just grab ourselves a piece of tin to demonstrate this purpose. I'll throw that in there along with the uh, bismuth bronze because it's probably going to heat the tin up a bit quicker. So I'll come back in a minute once we've got this nice and red hot or white hot as we probably want it to be. Yet another example of tin having a much lower melting point than uh, this stuff, the bismuth bronze. We've got our tin ingot up to the brilliant white stage. I'm going to pull it off of there and throw it into the crafting table or the anvil here. Um, so you can see I need one of the last three items to be a punch. So let's uh, get this guy pretty close here. There we go. I got myself a tin pickaxe head. Hooray! So uh, I can now go ahead and just get myself a stick and combine that with my tin pickaxe head and I've got myself a tin pickaxe. Saved myself two ingots by doing it the hard way on the anvil. And uh, we can do the same thing over here with our bismuth bronze. I want to let it get at least to white and then give that a try as well. 
Now, you might have also noticed when messing around in here, if you look at your sword recipes, um, the tin sword, for example, you cannot make that the old-fashioned way. You have to use a tin sword blade, and that's the same thing for pretty much all the other um, uh, metals and alloys that are out there. I think some of the vanilla recipes are still in, but you shouldn't be able to uh, use some of them, I believe. I don't know. Um, but the gist here is if you want to get yourself a tin sword, you're going to need a tin sword blade. And again, you're going to have to work the anvil for that. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is throw our tin into the fire. And I'm going to throw it in the top slots here and let it start cooking up. Get myself some more coal since I cleaned out my inventory. Bad direwolf. Cleaning out inventories when you're supposed to be mod spotlighting. All right. So let's get ourselves a recipe for a sword blade. We're going to want to do something like this. I believe. And then a piece of paper, of course, up there. There we go. Plan for a sword blade. Sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that into our anvil here. And uh, let's get ourselves just one piece of tin. Where'd it go? I melted it already. See what I mean by you lose the metal if you melt it all the way down? All right, got my tin ingot to the white stage here. That should be good, right? Let's go ahead and throw it in here. Hey, the bars didn't move. That's not good. Why is that? Well, um, if you notice in any eye, you'll see that there's actually some tin ingot 2x along with your tin ingots. Um, you're actually going to need a double tin ingot here to work on and get your sword made. So how do we make this double tin ingot without using any eye? Well, we're going to need two tin ingots, of course. Uh, this is another point where the forge here will come in awfully handy. Uh, you want to throw your tin ingots in here, and you want them both to be brilliant white. And they both have to be at the brilliant white stage. Um, and this is a little bit hard to achieve with tin because of how quickly it will melt. Um, so tin's probably not a great example to use here, uh, but I'll go ahead and stick with it and see if I can't pull it off quick enough. So we want our tin ingots to be brilliant white. And uh, if you're not careful, they will melt and they will cool down awfully quick. See how quickly that went down to white? So I'm gonna let this guy get up to white and then throw this one in and hopefully be able to pull them off and do this quickly. And if not, I might switch to a different metal. And what you have to do is place them both in here in the brilliant white stage and then place some limestone cobble over on the right. So you can see they already chilled down to white. So let's uh, try and pull this off again. Like I said, tin, harder to do because it melts so quickly. This is another example of how terra firma craft can make things a little tricky on you. And if you're not quick enough to pull them out of the fire, you will lose your ingots, like I said. Just combine them and hit weld, and you get 10 ingot times 2. Cool. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to disappear, and I'm going to assume that's a bug that they didn't. But now you've got a legitimate 10 ingot 2x. Um, so that's how you manage to combine two tin ingots into a tin ingot 2x. Notice that it did use up the limestone cobble. That's really only new used when you're welding two ingots together, so you do not need to use limestone ingot, like I said in my last spotlight for all your uh, anvil work, just when you're welding two ingots. Then we can go ahead and cook this guy up to a nice hot stage. So let's get him up to brilliant white, and I'll be right back. All right, got our tin ingot up to brilliant white here. Now if we throw this guy into our crafting table with the sword plan, you can see we have to get a few more things in here. One of the last three has to be a bend. Ah, oh, there we go. Tin sword blade. Sweet. Managed to get a little bit lucky doing that. Um, and again, going to need a stick. And our tin sword blade. Awesome. I got a sword. About time, too. You guys may have remembered in my last video when I said I don't know how to make smooth stone. I showed you how to get, you know, the unbroken stone, but I didn't know how to get smooth stone. It's simple. Just go into the world, find a uh, chisel, and right-click on a block, and it will become the smooth version of said block. And you can mine it. And again, it's the smooth version of nice, not regular old nice, which is what you would have to use for your recipes. So there's smooth nice, which looks cool. There's nice brick, which, uh, as you can see, you need the uh, chisel and a crafting table to get. And then uh, just regular old nice, which I showed you guys how to harvest uh, previously. 
Next up, I want to introduce you guys to the bellows. As you can see, you're going to need some planks and some leather to get yourself some bellows. And what you want to do is use that on your bloomery. Um, if we place the bellows on the side of the bloomery block like so, you'll notice the bloomery block has a nice hole on the side here. And when you place your bellows, the hole for the bellows, let's place it down on the ground here, you can see there's one slot, will be the opposite face that you place it down on. So if you want to place your bellows, if I can get this guy up, there we go. Just place it down like so. Right there, there we go. That looks cool. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some coal and uh, some stuff in there and see if we can get it even hotter than we did yesterday. And that is the point of the bellows, is to get um, the bellows a lot hotter than it would have been otherwise. You know what, you can't use coal in there. It has to be charcoal, isn't that right, dire wolf? I should have watched my mod spotlight. So there we go, charcoal now. All right, much better. Sweet. And uh, the bellows here should help to get this thing even hotter than it was yesterday, allowing uh, you know higher tier metals to melt faster. Uh, for example, the copper and whatnot. So good deal. All right, guys. So I showed you pretty much everything there was to show on metallurgy. I think there's probably a bit more to it, but uh, that covers the basics. I think. You guys got to see the bloomery, and you got to see the forge, and uh, of course this little fire pit over here, which is your, you know, most basic form of melting liquids, and then the anvil to, uh, you know, work your uh, metals into a nice little cool shape. Now the one thing I haven't gotten too much into yet is cavens. Cavens is a random chance, and there is a config file setting to change the uh, chance, and I think you could probably set it all the way down to zero if you uh, really didn't like the idea of cavens. But basically what happens, and you guys saw it in the last video is if you're digging along in a cave and uh, you know you have a whole bunch of work to do let's get ourselves a better pickaxe here to demonstrate this with I'm gonna go like pick one of these really cool looking ones I don't know like what all these different guys are but let's try steel that's probably a good one right where'd my steel pickaxe go I did ask for one didn't I there it is oh yeah cool oh yeah that's nice and quick look at that so what happens is as you're digging along here um, it's randomly possible for your ceiling to fall in on you, which is not cool. Basically what happens is, remember I said cobblestone is affected by gravity, and as you're just mining up in the ceiling there, it's a random but semi-low chance for, uh, you know, the ceiling to come crashing down on you. Oh, there was a little mini cave-in right there. Oh, that's a much bigger cave-in. Whoa. <laughs> So, not the end of the world. I mean, you will be able to get out of it, um, as you can see. Just try and manage to dig your way out. Hopefully you don't die. I guess it's possible to die from this, though, so keep that in mind. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, it's pretty cool. I like that mechanic. That's kind of neat. Uh, you can reinforce your caves to help prevent cave-ins, and I'll show you guys how to do that coming up next. I want you guys to see how far back this cave-in went. This must have been a big one because uh, I am just digging back here and there's just cobble all over the place. So I think this cave-in was a pretty large one. There's a huge area affected. Look at all this. There's cobble all over the place back here. Remember I was down in this cave last episode, uh, part one of the spotlight here? And wow, yeah, lots of cobble. So that cave-in was pretty serious. That was a big one. This whole area fell in on me. Kind of cool. All right, so how do we prevent that? Well, it's easy. We just need some support beams. And support beams are crafted like so. Just take, uh, you know, any kind of wood. You can see there's a bunch of different types of them. And there's two types. Vertical support beams, which you place your pickaxe in a crafting table with uh, wood on the right side of it. And then horizontal support beams, which is the wood underneath the pickaxe like so. So, pretty cool. And if we get ourselves some uh, white cedar, looks nice. Sure, why not? Um, and you can see that they only stack up to four. So, uh, you know, again, the low stackage thing, but no problem. Uh, all you gotta do in order to uh, set up a support beam here, let's see if I can clear out a little bit of an area before uh, I get another cave-in on me. Uh, place your vertical support beams like so. Cool. There we go. And that should hold up that piece of stone and a good majority of the stone around it. Um, I believe it goes back as far as four um, blocks away from that piece. So it should hold up a good amount. 
Um, now you can also place your horizontal support beams to uh, go something like this. Uh, yeah, it's not going to work. It works better when you start with a non-caved-in cave, like so. Um, now, the only thing with these horizontal support beams is that you can't just run a horizontal support beam all the way across the ceiling. That would not work after a while, right, in real life? No, definitely not. So, same in Terra Firma Craft. After a while, you can't click any further along, and you're going to need another vertical support beam to get you uh, straightened out. So uh, go ahead and place down another vertical support beam, and then you can mine to your heart's content. Now, I haven't seen a cave-in from mining like this path that I mined deep back there, but it seems to happen more often when you're mining up on the ceiling. So uh, keep that in mind as you're mining away. Looks like you can mine, you know, straight through, but if you try to have like a big, tall ceiling that you're mining out, well, you might have a problem. So there you go. And it looks like we shouldn't have much more of a problem with cave-ins, at least in this general area here. We're kind of supporting the ceiling, and uh, we should be cool. Now, it's only going to support at this Y level that it's holding up. So if I keep mining above the support beams, I still have another chance for a cave-in, which is not what you want to see happen. So just be careful as you're mining. Uh, I'm sure the cave-in mechanics are a little bit more complicated than what I've said, but uh, that's the basic gist. And guys, that's a pretty good wrapping up point for part two of the Terra Firma Craft mod spotlight. Some really cool stuff in this mod, like I said. Um, there's a bunch of complexity added to Minecraft, and it's a really a huge overhaul on pretty much the entire way Minecraft works. Um, there is even a way to do a little bit of gold panning like you would um, with this neat little block here. I haven't entirely figured it out, but there's a video on the... Um, a tutorial video on this exact mechanic on the forum post. So I'm going to recommend you guys go check out the video made by the creator of this mod and uh, see if you can't get the gold panning mechanic to work. Um, but there's a bunch of different things coming in the future as well. Like I said, this thing just recently came out of alpha and there's a ton of new mechanics planned. Um, I don't know if he wants me to tell all the stuff that he's told me, but uh, he's explained quite a few more mechanics um, and different blocks that he has planned in the future. So keep in the back of your mind that this is by no means anywhere near done. Um, lots of cool stuff planned for Terra Firma Craft in the future, and I'm pretty much looking forward to seeing where he goes with this, because uh, I think it's a neat mod. You know, very different from the mods I typically play, but it might be fun to do a world with Terra Firma Craft. So I could see myself playing through Terra Firma Craft at some point in the future. Maybe not just yet, but once it's really been fleshed out more and uh, out of beta, uh, I could see myself enjoying this mod quite a bit. So I hope you guys have enjoyed checking out Terra Firma Craft. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.